This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio Indy. I'm Kent Blanford in studio with me, Bridget Ayer. Hello, hello. Good to be with you. It's Advent. We're going into the Christmas season, and that's stressful enough. That yeah, is, that's no but doubt. But this year, we've layered COVID on top of Christmas. <laughs> so um, we're going to need some help with that. We are. And, you know, we have actually talked a lot about COVID-19 on this show, how it's affecting our lives and our ministries. And today we're going to be talking about the stress associated with living in a COVID world and how to manage it and maybe finding some coping strategies. And our guests, we've got a couple experts with us. They are therapists from Catholic Charities joining us. Uh, today we have O'Connell Case and Craig Fall. Welcome to Faith in Action. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about, maybe tell us a little bit about your background and what you do at Catholic Charities, your role. Let's start with you, Case. O'Connell. <laughs> People probably do that all the time, right? They, they, they change your names around, don't they? With those names. Um, I've been in the uh, uh, clinical world about 30 years, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and my position now is clinical director at Catholic Charities Bloomington. What we do there is um, is increase access to mental health services. And has I'm just curious, has there been a big uptick since this has all happened? I'm because I'm hearing that. Has that been your experience? In August, um, our referrals doubled, and in October they tripled. That's that's saying something right there. Um, Craig, tell us a little bit about yourself and and, and what you do. Sure, thank you. Well, I am also a licensed clinical social worker and a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I've been with the Archdiocese for about 21 years. I'm the Senior Associate Director for Catholic Charities. Um, And uh, prior to this, actually, I worked for Franciscan Health for a number of years. I was in administration and mental health there. And then I'm also a part-time faculty uh, person with the IUPUI School Social Work. Wow, very interesting. So we've got some really um, uh, some good people here to, to talk about this topic. Well, I want to start with um, what is stress, and then let's talk about what is a crisis. So who wants to take that? O'Connell? Okay, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Stress is the body's reaction to any change that requires an adjustment of the response. The body reacts to this change with physical, mental, and emotional responses. So even though stress is a normal part of our life, um, we can experience stress from environment, your body, or your thoughts. And we've certainly had all three of those with COVID-19. Yeah, that really kind of sorts it out there a little bit. Um, Craig, what about what's a crisis? Do you want to take that one? I will take that, and actually I've, I've uh, taught uh, crisis theory uh, and uh, have really uh, spent some time in, on, some, on some crisis teams throughout uh, my professional career, and a crisis is simply, um, it's an event really that leads to an unstable situation, and um, that situation can impact individuals, it can impact groups, it can impact whole societies. And, in fact, now we see this global unstableness um, from COVID. So when you put those two together, the, just those definitions, I mean, it really kind of clarifies, you know, why people are feeling so off balance and why it would be causing quite a bit of stress. I, I really, um, I'm, I'm curious if, if COVID stress is different from other types of stress. Why or why not? Yeah, and I'll take that, Bridget, um, because it, it really has impacted us in s- several key areas. Uh, one is our health. A second is our mental health. And, and really the third way is our social relationships. So three key dimensions, right, in our lives and COVID has had an unstableness in all three of those. 
and either even if we haven't been directly impacted, which it's likely we have, we know someone close to us that has been. Well, even if you even if maybe you haven't contracted COVID, you still have a health concern, a physical health concern of potentially getting it, which could then cause a mental health concern because you're stressed <laughs> out or freaked out, you know? That's exactly right. And, you know, a crisis um, can it lead to dangerous situations, and sometimes that is often our thought process and our fears, you know, are related not just to what has happened, but what can happen. Well, you know, as you're talking about this, I'm really thinking about really all aspects, as you mentioned, of our life have really been turned upside down. It's not just one of those three areas that you mentioned. It's really multifaceted. And and what makes me wonder about just, you know, when you, when your routine is thrown off a little bit, I mean, just anybody's routine, you know, you lose your car keys and, you know, in the morning or, or just something really simple, you know, your coffee, you can't find your coffee in the morning or something like that. Just little, how, how does routine getting off the routine and how does that connected with stress and how is it connected with this, this COVID situation? You get my question? Mm-hmm. Who wants to take that? Okay. O'Connell. I'll take it. Um, it. When we came home, all everybody had to come home and work from home. Mm -hmm. It was, people were in almost a fog for two or three weeks at least because our brain had to readjust and connect different um, uh, brain networks, neural networks, and that took some adapting. What's interesting now is we have the routine, but now we're in that maintenance part, and now stress is because... There's not enough variety. Mm. So we started with the, the, the three or four months of trying to get into a routine, and now we hear about it's not enough. There's no variety at all. Uh, if you're joining us right now, we're talking with O'Connell Case. She is the clinical director of Catholic Charities in Bloomington, and we're talking with Craig Fall, senior associate director for the Secretary of Catholic Charities in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and we're talking about stress management in a COVID world. I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, we, we mentioned the routine. I mean, the routines just keep changing, too, as kind of like the rules keep changing, mask, no mask, you know. I can go out, I can't go out, my gym's open, now my gym's not open. I'm at work today, I'm not at work today. You know, even today, just, <laughs> you know, our, our uh, my co-host, Jim Canley, is actually, you know, out getting a COVID test. So, you know, we had to kind of reshuffle here, Kent's in, and, you know, so it's 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 not easy. You know, we <laughs> Kent got a text early, you know, saying, hey, you know, I need you to be there. And, I mean, we all work it out, but but that it, it keeps changing. The ball keeps moving. So, can you talk a little bit about that? How do we navigate that? Yeah, well, I can I can take that question because it is a sustained crisis that we've been in. It's been obviously months. Mm-hmm. We we don't really know. We know there's some vaccines on the horizon. We, we we're not sure how that's all going to play out, and then also the aftermath from this. What's that going to look like? But the key to getting through this, Bridget, is really resilience. Yeah, and 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 I use that term to mean that it's our ability to adapt into you know in these difficult situations and and finding an approach and a capacity to deal with hardship and it's that way with any crisis that we face in life and this is no different that managing through this right now requires finding a resilience. And I want to, I'm glad that you brought that up. And um, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about something that I always find curious is some people are able to deal with crisis. Some people just kind of roll with things, you know, and other people, it really, really upsets the apple cart. And then obviously you've got people all on, on the spectrum, all in the middle somewhere too. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about high risk groups. Um, are there some people that are more at risk for stress can you explain that and then in the second half of the show we will talk about the steps to being more resilient because i want to get to that so o'connell you wanted to talk about that in terms of uh, high risk groups for this type of stress 
Really, and there's there's two types of high risk groups. You've okay. got the ones that are the, if you do it by population. Sure. So you've got older adults and those with chronic health issues that are uh, afraid to um, be out with other people and probably shouldn't be, and their family members. You've got the population of um, children and teens that aren't used to being. Um, without social interaction. You've got the health care workers and in the front line, front line being social, the social services where people are out there um, dealing with, with uh, the COVID crisis. Um, and then you've got, the, so you have those groups. And then you have people that have mental health issues or substance abuse issues beforehand. And what we're seeing a lot in our clinic is that people that had a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of depression, but with the COVID you've, uh, pandemic, you've got a little bit of, they used to have ways of coping with it, like distraction, like running, going to the gym, um, going to see their friends, working in their clubs, whatever like that. So um, all that is gone. So it's exaggerating small mental health issues and substance abuse issues. So their coping mechanisms got erased as well, right? That's right. So right. then so then what, you know? You gotta come up with new ones. You gotta come up with new ones. So do you have you suggested and I will go ahead and just do this, have you suggested um, what are some suggestions in terms of if you go if you do go to the gym but you can't go to the gym or you did go out with friends, but now you're not. And you're not, and number three, maybe you're not going into your office. You don't have those same connections. What are some of the alternatives that you've been suggesting to people that have been encountering this? O'Connell. Well, it's uh, connecting on um, technology, for instance, um, having uh, Zoom or other uh, ways with telehealth to um, get together with with people. Um, I, I know for me, I have a group of friends with that we Zoom on Friday night for one hour, and I'm probably closer to them now because I didn't see them, mm. you know, for mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but I think connecting that way, there's different ways to share movies through Netflix yeah. and other social ways, particularly with teenagers, we're doing that. And, may, um, and maybe work out at home, <laughs> get yeah, some barbells. Right, <laughs> right, right. Cans of soup. <laughs> yeah, there bell. you go. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So there's, there's plenty of, plenty of that. Um, what I tell people is that you have to focus on what you can control. That's and, a, yeah. That's a really good, that's a really good point, and at that point, at that moment, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we will come back for more Faith in Action to, to talk about resilience in a COVID world. So stay tuned for more. Alexa, what's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, what time is the Colts game today? Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Have you ever thought about joining the Catholic Church? Have you just wanted to explore the Catholic faith? All you need to do is call your local Catholic Church for more information. We are always happy to help you in your journey to discover and learn more about the Catholic faith. We have classes that are almost year-round, and the classes and information sessions do not involve making a commitment, and there is no pressure to join. Please call your local Catholic parish for more information today and start the journey of one day possibly becoming Catholic as well. God bless. You can hear the Holy Mass every day at 8 a.m. right here on Catholic Radio Indy. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Kent Blantford and I are in the studio, and we are talking about stress 
in a COVID world and how to build resilience is what we're going to talk about in the second half of the show. And we're talking with some um, local or central Indiana experts. We've got O'Connell Case, a clinical director with Catholic Charities in Bloomington, and also Craig Fall, who's an associate director, senior associate director and for the Secretary of Catholic Charities in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and they have other talents and titles, which I can't get to right now. We've talked about those at the beginning. But um, I want to talk about resilience in this COVID world. Um, Craig, let's start with you. What, what is that, and how does a person become more resilient? Right. It's so important because, you know, all of us go through crises in our lifetime. You, you can't avoid them, and some of us seem to fare better than others. And we always look then at this term resilience as maybe a key to understanding why some people do better than others. Now, again, resilience is our ability to adapt to difficult situations and and deal with hardships. And in a crisis like this, the danger is that if we are not resilient through it, then we may end up functioning at a very low, lower level, right, than when we started. And if we were already having problems, you know, if we already had Uh, other crises in our life or situations where we weren't uh, performing very well, let's say mentally or emotionally, then we're not going to be in any better shape, obviously. We could be in much worse shape. So when we talk about resilience, it's being able to find in those protective factors that are going to help us through, right, the hardship or the crisis that we're in. And some of us are you know, it's it's easier to find those things, you know, because protective factors can be things like a positive attitude or maybe uh, a good self-esteem. But that could be a problem for some of us. Maybe that's not something we uh, have had. So then we have to look at and find ways to develop more protective factors or draw on protective factors that are available to us. So what would be some other protective factors? And and as we're talking, I'm just thinking about, as you said, you know, depending on where you were at when this additional crisis happened. Like, let's say you're you had a job, you know, your relationships are okay, you have a positive attitude and then this happens and then, you know, your life goes sideways. It's different. It's different than someone who maybe was, you know, didn't have a job and maybe their relationships weren't doing very well. And maybe they had something else. And then this happens on top. It's just almost like the straw that broke the camel's back. So depending on where you're at when this happened, obviously will determine how well you're faring. But get, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit more about those protective factors. What are some other protective factors? Let's say you don't have a very good self-esteem or you don't have maybe um, good relationships or something or, or a positive right. attitude. That was the thing you said. Right. That's that's right. Well, I think then we have to look at strong, finding strong social supports. You know, okay. we have to look outside ourselves. If, if that's been a struggle, then we have to then connect with others that can be helpful to us, and that can be counseling. That could be, you know, visiting a therapist like O'Connell or myself. Um, it could be connecting with family, friends. What we want to do is avoid isolation. Now, Obviously, during COVID, that's what we're being drawn to for safety. And so we're going to have to look at how to reduce that isolation as much as possible and connect with others. I obviously should mention faith Mm -hmm. as a very important protective factor that we can uh, draw upon. And if that's been part of, um, you know, part of us, then uh, we have to go towards that. If it hasn't been, that may be an option that we have to look at. Um, For, you know, for children and youth, then uh, they're going to need good parenting and they're going to really need that support from their mentors and adults around them. And so we're going to have to, we're going to have to really focus on that and help people in in family situations. Um, So, you know, if it's not a natural thing for you, like self-esteem or... Uh, feeling uh, uh, that you can get through things, uh, then you have to find others to help help you through that. I want to I want to get to the um, how to build a stress management plan. Uh, so 
Uh, O'Connell, do you want to talk a little bit about that and what does that mean and how what's all involved with that? Okay. Um, first of all, I think if we can view this as um, an opportunity, mm-hmm. it helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could say, okay, you know, parents are home and this is definitely a different place to be and kids are home school, doing homeschooling and talk about having to adjust, um, but it is also we're seeing um, an opportunity for families to get together, to go out to the park, um, to do more family time. And that's just an example. So if you could go into it saying, what's the opportunity here, I think it helps. And I think, I think so. Go ahead. I, I was going to say Go some ahead. people, I'm just thinking about my family as you're talking. And I mean, in some ways, it's been great. You know, I mean, there's there been those rough days, too. You know, when you can't get the online school to work. But, you know, you get technology issues or whatever. So there's, there's been a lot of up and down. But, you know, yeah, you have to say, well, I think some people might look back and say, this was like the best time of my life. I would have, I wish I would have taken more advantage of this time that we had together, you know, and I may, I am a little older. So I think that, you know, I'm a little older parent with my kids. Maybe I am old enough to realize that it doesn't last very long and you got to enjoy it. You know what I mean? But go on, go on with that. I just had to, had to throw that in there. Okay. I think the first thing is that we have to have uh, self-care. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else or, or help anyone else. And what we often see is that, that when we get calls, it's because uh, self-care has been left out. So um, I would say on your own, but even better if you can connect uh, virtually with a few friends where you can uh, brainstorm and get different ideas um, is to set up this this stress plan. One of the things I think is important is to have 15 minutes of quiet just to yourself. And even busy mothers can do that. And it's like giving you extra oxygen. Mm-hmm. Um, collect your thoughts. Up. <laughs> to collect your thoughts at the beginning of the day, you know, just to have that quiet. Yeah. Or say to your your child, um, "Mama is going into timeout, and go in your bedroom for fifteen minutes." Um, so also setting up and maintaining a routine. I, I say that um, because routines are even for the whole family. It you know what's expected, and and then I mentioned earlier that we are now in that maintenance part, and so now we have a routine at home, but. It's we're, what we're seeing is depression and trying to figure out some variety. So adding some safe variety will help. Um, and, again, focusing on things you have control over. Um, and that might be like uh, finding um, goals, that short-term goals that you, you can uh, have control over, things maybe you didn't have time to do before. So what can you control? Yeah, and some people um, I've heard are, are cooking healthier meals now. You know, they have more time to cook because they're home. Like, maybe they never cook. Maybe they're learning how to cook for the first time, you know. Uh, maybe they're learning how to right. use their computer for the first time, you know, or some of the apps or technology, you know. It's it's kind of all over the map there, but but those are some good suggestions. Uh, we have about, I don't know, about three, four minutes left. Is that about right, Kent? Okay, um, I want to talk... Uh, was there anything else you want to talk about with the stress management um, plan? Uh, two things. Sure, uh, go ahead. Avoiding the news spiral. <laughs> um, be informed, but don't be immersed in it. Yes. Because it takes over. And staying present with here and now, because if we worry about what may happen, that's not going to be useful. So just staying with today. Go ahead, Craig. Okay, yeah, let me just add, too, that even with every crisis, even though there's danger, what we look at is opportunity, and that's the hope, is that we can come through resilient by uh, adapting and finding opportunities for positive growth. And, and that's really our key to getting through this, and any crisis, in fact. Right. There is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We, we're not going to be able to control everything, but what can we control 
and how can we, you know, make the best of this time, like being in the present moment and having hope, um, you know, not to diminish what's going on, but also to be, you know, positive about it. I, I want to ask about um, resources that we can maybe point our listeners to. I know that that um, how I got connected to you is, um, you know, through Catholic Charities. I noticed that you guys did a webinar um, a couple weeks back um, about this topic, and I thought, wow, we need to do a, a show on that. Um, so what are some resources we can point people to? we got a couple minutes left to talk about those. It's the cdc.gov mm-hmm. that gives us information. On our website in Bloomington, which is ccbin.org, Mm-hmm. ccbin.org we have resources on there and um, there's a be well on there that is actually a state of Indiana resource there's a COVID workbook on there we also have a YouTube channel you just Catholic Charities Bloomington and that has um, videos that demonstrates coping skills oh, that's, that's and, a good one good yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, in Indy, we've got the website helpcreatehope.org. If, if for either one of us, if you want to have services, you can call our numbers directly. And mine's 812-332-1262. And uh, the Indy one is 317-236-1500, option two. Craig, I'll give you the last word. we got about a minute left. Any uh, parting thoughts or other resources you want to give our audience? Sure. Well, you know, another resource, uh, there's a, a book that was written just a few years ago called Managing Stress with the Help of Your Catholic Faith that our listeners might be interested in. Mary Lou uh, Rosen, R-O-S-I-E-N. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good resource, and I think it fits any kind of um, you know situation like uh, that we're dealing with when there's a crisis. So we just need to let our audience know that there is hope, right? And and I love the website. So it's www.helpcreatehope.org. Correct. Yes, that's correct. All right. Well, I want to thank our guest O'Connell Case. Direct, clinical Director at Catholic Charities Bloomington and Craig Fall, Senior Associate Director um, of Catholic Charities here in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you, Thank you for having us. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.